the way the crop did this year is going to help a grower determine what they're going to plant next year. So the cycle just begins again as soon as that crop's off. The work never stops. Farmer Ricky Bauer can vouch for that as he prepares for today's corn harvest. The work starts with a routine checkup under the hood of the combine. Ricky and his mechanical companion have a big task at hand, and they can't afford a breakdown. I usually grease it and, and look it over in the morning to make sure there, or try to find if there is any problems to alleviate a problem during the day. It was only a few months back in mid-May that Ricky and Megan Mullins from Willard Agri-Service were in this exact same spot at Carroll Mill Farm in Howard County, mapping out what once was an empty field. Many factors were taken into consideration before planting. Ideally, when a grower is shopping for seed corn, what they're going to look for is a CRM, which is a relative maturity date. It's an estimation of the amount of time it's going to take for that corn plant to develop or mature. This helps the growers determine how long they have until harvest. But it's not the only decision Ricky had to make when picking what to plant where. Factors like soil quality, market forces, and even wildlife can influence what type of corn seed goes in the ground. A lot of growers like Ricky will choose a less expensive variety to put around the outside. So if the field has a history of pest damage, they'll be able to anticipate that. Most of the time, deer eat from the outside of the field inward. So it makes more sense to save the expensive seed for the inside rows. Once the seeds have been planted, it's a waiting game. With help from the occasional doses of fertilizer and herbicide, the corn grows into a sea of lush green stalks. By early fall, the vibrant green begins to fade as the corn dries down. The crop looks promising, but only time will tell if their hard work paid off. In a perfect world, we like to see high yield numbers across the entire field. Obviously, the deer damage is gonna influence that weather conditions, pollination, and all those things are going to influence how consistent that yield is across the field. Of course, knowing when to harvest makes a big difference too. You'll notice these dents that form in the top of the kernel, and that's a sign that the ear is drying down, the grain's drying down, and it's being prepared for harvest. In addition to how it looks, the corn's moisture levels have to be taken into account also. Ideally, you're going to be 17 to 19 percent on your moisture in order to harvest. Come November, the corn is dry and Ricky has the combine ready to go. Behind the wheel, he carefully maneuvers the machine through the rows, all while keeping an eye on the numbers, particularly the crop's water content. This tells us instantly on the go where our moisture is, so it saves us the effort of having to go do it manually, and we know what to do with the corn as soon as it's coming out of the combine. If it's too wet, the grain could spoil in storage, but he can't leave it in the field too long, as the deer have already started a harvest of their own. You'll look at the stalk here, and you'll notice there's not near. In some other areas of the field, you might see where there was an ear, but it's partially been devoured before we were able to harvest the crop. Despite the deer damage, Ricky is satisfied with the harvest so far. As he works toward the center of the field, the bushels per acre reading on his monitor begins to climb. We're not done yet, but as you've seen, it's increased from, what, 110 bushel when we started to, I think the average is 170. As the day goes on, Ricky's uncle takes truckload after truckload of corn up to the barn, where it's unloaded into bins. Here, propane heaters will continue to dry the grain until it's ready for its final destination. Most of our corn tends to go up into Pennsylvania for livestock feed. By the end of the harvest, the average bushels per acre had risen to 192 proving all Ricky and Megan's hard work did pay off. And as Ricky wraps up his day in the field, 
he knows this is just one of many more combine rides to come. But for now, he can take a sigh of relief. It's done, it's in the bin, and then you can start thinking about what you've got to do for next year, basically. Thanks for watching Maryland Farm and Harvest. We hope you like the video. To learn more about our show and watch full episodes, check out mpt.org farm, or just click the link in the description.